Este é mais um programa da rede Mipo Manics. Assine você também a Mipo TV. Olá, galera. Bem-vindos à Mipo TV. Eu sou o Jack Explicador e hoje vou trazer para vocês uma entrevista, um bate-papo que fiz com os designers de barragem Tomaso Batista e Simone Luciani. Dois designers que eu realmente adoro. Se você ainda não conhece o jogo, está aqui na Mipo TV. É só você clicar no izinho aqui em cima para conhecer não só o jogo básico, como também a expansão. Mas se você ainda não conhece o jogo, vamos deixar que o próprio design explique pra gente sobre o que, que se trata Barrage. The game is a game about uh, hydroelectric management, so player fight to control the water. And uh, we set the game uh, in a strange uchronic period, so in, in the early 19, in the early 19 because uh, We like to give uh, a special flavor from the past, uh, from yes. but mainly you 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 fight to, to to control the water to produce energy, and uh, one of the main uh, important mechanic is that the water is a shared resource that player compete to control uh, it and uh, use it. And uh, one of the things that the player most appreciate and uh, compare the game to Brass that I'm very proud because Brass yeah. is one of my favorite game of all, of all the time. So I'm very proud that uh, people uh, compare to Brass Barrage is that resources is uh, mm, shared in, in a special way because there is interaction between the player in a good and bad way. You fight with the other player, but you can also use uh, the, the, the action from the other player to, to, to do something. So it's a special element that was that goes quite well in the game, so players like this, uh, this aspect. One of the innovations do Barrage foi trazer o tempo como um recurso a ser gerenciado. Na verdade, Simone já havia utilizado, experimentado isso em Tzoken e aperfeiçoou agora em Barrage. Como que foi esse processo criativo para gerenciar o recurso como o tempo? It's a challenge, it's a, it's a challenge to, to manage the resources during the game, but it was also a challenge to design the wheel in the way that worked well. We spend a lot of time to create these, these mechanics because we try many solutions because the idea of the timing of the resources is, is, uh, is uh, in the early stage uh, of the development, but uh, we don't find uh, early a, me a mechanics that works well. So we try different solutions. When you play, the, the goal is to have the right timing and use the speed of the wheel uh, to, to help uh, to help get back the resources because uh, if you spend a lot of resources and don't have a plan to get back your resources you are in, in a in a big trouble yes so one of the bad aspect of the game is uh, is not a really forgiven game if you don't plan <laughs> well you can have a lot of trouble not yeah. only for the mechanics of the wheel but the wheel is a one of the part but the same is for Tolkien. You have this to kind plan of further mechanic, for exactly. to work if, exactly at the point. If you don't plan well uh, how to turn the wheel, how many resources you want to spend, uh, uh, you can have a lot of problems. Hi, yes. Jack. Uh, I'm, I'm happy of the final design of the wheel also because it re reflects uh, very, um, with, with very fidelity the, the reality of the use of the equipment in the real construction works. So, uh, because uh, is very, there is a, a very different way to consider uh, resources in the construction, because there are some resources that there are uh, consumable, so in the standard resources, but the equipment itself is not a standard resources, it's just a, a, a sort of uh, um, um, machinery that you have to uh, use uh, carefully during the time. So I, I think that this one is one of the uh, good points uh, in, in order to uh, characterize the team of the game uh, with uh, uh, strong, solid mechanics. 
Barrage surgiu então de uma ideia inicial do trabalho do dia a dia do Tomaso. Ele levou isso para o Luciane e começaram a trabalhar na ideia. Mas como que surge normalmente na cabeça de um designer uma ideia de um jogo? Veio de um tema ou veio de uma mecânica? Como que foi isso no processo criativo do Barrage? Yes, you know that uh, I worked um, for a lot of time in the construction uh, um, market, uh, especially in the hydropower. Uh, you are so, an architect. Yes, I'm an architect, uh, but uh, I worked uh, a lot in the, in the construction. And uh, looking for the real um, construction management, especially in the tender management, because I was uh, I worked in the tender department of uh, construction. So. Uh, we studied a lot of uh, problem uh, about uh, resources management to construct uh, uh, dams uh, and hydroelectric system. So just uh, observing the reality of this problem, uh, in some way the core idea came raised from, from this. And uh, I'm very happy then that uh, uh, sharing this idea with Simone, we... Um, We, we, we was able to uh, um, conduct this core idea uh, until the, to the, to the final, uh, final stage. So I think this one is a, a good game also because it's very, um, uh, with a very good uh, sense of the team. The game, in my mind, it's like a media. You are told, me, you are told a, a, a story and, and, and I'm part of it. So yes, the mechanic yes. is trying to make me feel like this person in the game. But the mechanic came first, or the idea came first, how it works For in the process? Each, uh, each designer has different way to work on a game. And for me personally, uh, I work different on each game. Because uh, my feeling is that each game needs... Uh, a different approach, a different sensibility. So each game has a different story. And uh, to make a good game from one idea, from you have to follow the, the game. So each time is different, uh, but usually I travel from team to mechanics a lot, a lot of time during one development. Uh, a lot of time I start from the mechanics, for example, We have uh, for Grand House or for the game an idea of a mechanics, but uh, I add uh, immediately a theme because the theme stimulates uh, the creativity process mm -hmm. and uh, also make a game a little bit more thematic, more uh, less abstract, but uh, stimulate the discussion. If you work only in abstract, uh, for me, It is uh, is more difficult to have idea to speak uh, about idea. So usually we make uh, some time. We start from the team. Some time start um, a lot of time start from the, the mechanics. But uh, we are the team. Then work on the team. Then try to make a mechanics work well and uh, uh, keep the team uh, aside. Then the team come back. And this uh, movement uh, is. Uh, made often during a development. How do you can feel in the team? Like Tomazo came with the idea to you and you look the game and, and, and thought, okay, I can, we can make it stand in this lot of games that are releasing. Yes, easier. usually I try to, to, to find an idea that that's something new. Is because uh, with so many games, uh, it's important to have an idea that uh, that uh, that is different from from the other. It is not enough because at the end, uh, people like game that uh, enjoy to play, and there are some games with no a lot of new idea, but uh, works very well and they are also a big success. So the the idea is not all the game. Especially for complete game, you you need a game that works very well. When I see to, when I see the game for the first time, the idea of Tommaso, I, I just uh, play the prototype one time and I want to finish the the, the, the game. <laughs> Usually I play one or couple of round, but I want to finish the game because my feeling is uh, 
oh, it could be another another funke slug. It's about energy production. It works. There is a team interesting. We had to change a lot of a lot of things. We had to rebuild the game around this idea. But the feeling is uh, there is potential. It's also a personal feeling uh, when you when you approach to an idea. But in this case. Uh, uh, sent to, to a good game, so it, it's a good feeling. Yes, yeah, it's it's really a big box, you know. It's a half game, and in fact, it's it's in two boxes. Now we are releasing the the stand game and the uh, Lake Water Project. It's expansion. It was originally in the game. This is special. Well, uh, it's it's a uh, it's a kind of make the game more accessible first then bring some new ideas to the project how how was this uh, it, it was a, a commercial issue or it was uh, a, a game usually issue? most of times for my games uh, the expansion is a commercial issue so the game have a, has a big success for example grand Dose hotel people ask for an expansion and we yes. make the expansion I don't like make the expansion because uh, prefer to work on a new idea. Also like also like to work in any way on a game, <laughs> but prefer a new idea than uh, work to enlarge an old idea. So I prefer to work on a new game than uh, than expansion. But in this case, the story is a little bit different because we designed the game uh, as a unique game. We test for a couple of years the game. Uh, as a Lego the project and the base game together, we we have in mind to publish the game as the uh, with the expansion inside. For us, it's no expansion. It, it yeah. was the base game. Then, in the last year of test, uh, we realized that the game is a little bit too big uh, because we test for a core group that uh, learned the game very well and played the game very well. So they are able to play with uh, the, the leg border project very well but when we test with different groups the feeling uh, is uh, that the game uh, without the leg border project is, is enough so we split yes. the game in two parts and we have the expansion just uh, just done and uh, it's good for me <laughs> Yes. So, you remember, Simone, that uh, you called me from Gen Con uh, when uh, you tried the game with uh, the new people, then uh, and uh, you showed the people uh, just a base game, just to introduce them, and they say that that is really just complex in this way. So, nos últimos anos o mercado tem mudado bastante. Algumas ferramentas surgiram, como o Kickstarter, que possibilitou o lançamento de jogos maiores, mais complexos, e Barrage é o grande exemplo dessa nova tendência. Como que isso funciona na cabeça do designer que vai começar a fazer projetos para serem lançados daqui a um, dois anos à frente? I think the process is similar as as I said before when you play a lot of time the one game. If you play complex game, another complex game feel less complex for you. Yeah. And I think this process create a few player that like complex and more complex game so i think uh, some games that uh, is published now are unpublished in publish it's impossible to publish uh, 10 years late 10 years ago because uh, people like uh, an increasing of the complexity of the game people more and mature on the, now these on days. the other hand uh, for the family the the complexity decreases So we have uh, a market divided in two big uh, area, a very complex game and very easy and uh, low rules game. We have some great game in the middle, but uh, not so much, very few in, in the middle. Yes, I, yes. I'm not a, a publisher, but uh, I, I have the feeling that there is a sort of pyramid of... Uh, customers uh, from the casual gamers to the core uh, to the gamers uh, and uh, because the base uh, 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 came to be wider 
probably the, the casual, more casual gamer produce more more uh, gamer and more gamer produce more very very hardcore gamer for the game uh, Simone said. From a designing point of view, uh, it's, it's difficult to decide uh, where to set your design because um, in some way, design a very big game like uh, Barrage, it requires a lot of time, but if you go uh, precisely, probably um, the game could be a success or in some way it could be functional. With the uh, family game or casual games, it's, it's very difficult to uh, focus the idea and uh, keep the market is very difficult because you have a, a very competitive way, um, very competition in, in this uh, in this field. So that's the that's the main problem for to decide how to set your design point, design level. You, yeah, yes, you, at, at the beginning for sure it was more, 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 more a smaller game uh, in, in comparison, very small. Uh, no, no, not a family game, but uh, a, a kernel level, more or less. Yes, but uh, probably working working on that, uh, we um, we discovered also the um, possibility of the game because the the core idea uh, admit us to increase the level of the game. Um, in some way, we have all, we had also the necessity to uh, um, step back some some time because we 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 designed the also more complexity than the the final work. We explored a lot of uh, um, different way for the game. Uh, that probably was important because uh, you know uh, uh, the final project. Uh, what you see is uh one percent in some way of the total <laughs> of the ideas but uh, I, I i hope that is the better one <laughs> we, we, a lot have, of spaces maybe. <laughs> we have idea for at least the three more game yes for sure <laughs> during, the, during the developing process of barrage yeah, this is very good. And, and Simone, now you are in head of the editorial development in Crane Creations. Now you, you have the opportunity to work with a lot of new designers. Um, how working this partnership with is with the new projects, with the yes, new minds it, to work it, with? <laughs> it's a little bit um, strange because uh, I have. Uh, I am a man uh, in two different roles because I am the head developer of Cranio, but also I am game designer mainly. Yes. It's not often. Usually a lot of uh, developer or head developer are only developer and leave to the designer a lot of space. I am designer and I cannot stop my mind. So a lot of time I like to change the game and I like to change it a lot. And it's not... Uh, all the time easy because uh, designer uh, have to agree in in a heavy development process. Usually, a lot of company take the game from the designer, make a little bit, uh, few changes, and publish the game. I realize when I start to work with Cranio that I like to change a lot game. I have the vision of. Uh, how to make better and uh, and so I must to be very diplomatic, I suppose. Very diplomatic and also <laughs> very clear with the designer. And when I meet Tommaso, I say I like the idea, but I want to change all the rest. And uh, not all the designer say, okay, yeah, uh, okay. let's go. A lot they of give to you their baby, so you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You you touch you touch uh, their baby. So uh, Tommaso is very proud, is very brave to <laughs> to to choose this uh, this path. But uh, at the end, uh, I think he's, he's happy about the results. Yeah, but so it's. it's uh, not also about the result, also about the process, because, you know, uh, working uh, two or three years uh, with uh, um, an outdoor with the experience of Simone, that now we are also friends, but yeah, <laughs> he was, uh, I was very happy to work with him because obviously for me it was a very 
um, teaching but um, very important for my um, growth in, in this uh, in this uh, in this area so i'm so so I'm happy to uh, add the possibility to work with him one of the start. most important things is that uh, during uh, wo the work with other designers a lot of time very very many times uh, i create a, a very big human uh, um, friendship and uh, I, I have mostly friends, not uh, colleagues. E é óbvio que eu não ia perder a oportunidade de bater um papo com o Simone para saber quais são os próximos lançamentos futuros, o que, que vem por aí. So you can expect new games, maybe new projects, I suppose. For to me? Come. Yes, for, for, yes, for you yes. both. We, we... <laughs> because uh, because I, it's my main work and I live with royalty, so no new project. <laughs> no, Are you working a new project now? Uh, yes, yes. That, uh, that, that we can say, uh, tell us. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm working on projects that are not uh, uh, published because I also work uh, for projects okay. that uh, came out one, one year, mm -hmm. two year uh, in, Before, in the future. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm working in my first 4X game. So it's a game uh, that have uh, mainly Europe because I love your game. So I'm I'm uh, on my ground, but with uh, with uh, American vibes. So <laughs> you can fight with the other player. There is combat. There is area control. So I think a little, it's the, the the most similar game is Scythe. So okay. you can fight with the other the other player, and I think uh, we are reaching a very good uh, good results. I'm satisfied. But the, nice. the next the next big project that is coming out is Golem with Virginio and Flaminia that uh, mm -hmm. are my partners of many games, and uh, will be published in in the in the first quarter of the next year. Okay, and what about the Darwin's journey? That it, yes, it also Darwin's journey in. Uh, Uh, on Kickstarter and the yes. expansion of the industry hotel that is uh, is near to close the Kickstarter. Also, okay. Darwin Journey, I'm very proud of this new collaboration and I'm very happy about the the final results. It, it, it's a good, it's also a good game. E para fechar o nosso bate-papo, perguntei para o Tomaso e para o Simone qual o designer favorito deles hoje, atualmente, e também que jogo eles gostariam de ter criado. Vamos dar uma olhada o que, que eles responderam. Which design impress you most these days? What Fister. kind of who? Fister. <laughs> the, Fister. The, yes, the probably is one of the the best in EV game uh, designer uh, in time. They mix a lot of mechanics and yes, and it's it, it's a uh, alchemist. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I, And you see, Simone? The more recent uh, designer, I my, my favorite is also Pfister because I love Great Western Slim very much. I love uh, uh, Maracaibo, that is uh, one of the competitors of Barrage that I like very much the game. And mm. uh, uh, another designer that impressed me very much in the light game is Wolfram Varsh. Oh yes, Very because nice. uh, many different ideas, many many surprises, innovative original, ideas. Original, yes, yes. Very original and different one from each other. In <laughs> in my life, I spend uh, so many times with Magic the Gathering. Uh, so I think uh, <laughs> I, <suppose>. I <laughs> love oh, not oh, not only because it's a collectible game and one of the most successful in in the world as a selling uh, point, but also. The second one is the Terraforming Mars because I love very much the game. I love the card combo game. So I think it's a, yeah. an heavy game that I played the most in the last uh, years. Tomaso, can you tell us? Uh, to me, to me um, for sure, um, the, 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 for, um, on, among the big game, uh, Sight is one of the games that uh, oh. I really like to to be the designer because uh, there are a lot of um, 
um, mixing. I, I like this kind of hybrid game uh, with uh, some uh, take it from Euro, take it from American uh, topological ways. Very, very good game. But I would like also to be the designer of a very classic game that Simone probably loves more than me. That is Turn on Taxis or some kind of game that is uh, very, very, very core idea, very simple, very simple, but. Uh, strong classic, I, uh, yes it's a very classic, classic yeah. uh, i suppose that uh, this kind of uh, of elegance in a game is um, very repeatable really yes. elegant yes really really elegant thank you guys it was a, for me a pleasure to talk with you also for uh, us i'd like to extend for, this for more uh, new interviews maybe someday the people tv are open to you every moment that you want the Brazilian people love your work. As I said, we really like this kind of game. You now you have this meaning uh, interaction <laughs> that we in Brazil love and in Italy also like. It was a pleasure for me to receive you guys. Thank you very much. Do you like to give some goodbye, some ideas for the Brazilian people now? Hello to all the Brazilian gamers. Very happy that uh, that barrage are coming in Brazil, and hope one time we will meet and uh, we, we are able to travel to Brazil. It will be fantastic. So I will join you. <laughs> Bom galera, este foi o nosso bate-papo com Simone e com Tomaso, e eu espero trazer mais novidades para vocês sempre que possível aqui na Mipo TV. Se você curtiu, dê um like, inscreva-se aqui no canal considerem virar um dos nossos apoiadores do nosso clube de membros. Eu sou o Jack Explicador, muito obrigado, galera. Até a próxima. Tchau, tchau.